Sony Ericsson has announced the X10 abandoning Windows Mobile in favour of Android as the base OS, and the in-house interface dubbed UX Platform or Rachel on top. The X10 is set to appear in quarter one in selected markets next year and will come in black or white. There's a Timescape app which will funnel emails, SMS and status updates into a neat timeline and a Mediascape app which collates local media, YouTube and Playnow. Under the hood there's a 1 GHz Snapdragon CPU, Android 1.6, a 4 inch capacitive touchscreen, 8 megapixel camera and the usual Wi-Fi, GPS etc. Significantly it's the first top end Sony Ericsson smartphone to feature both micro USB and a 3.5mm audio jack. No more proprietary connectors. Hooray! Canalyst Quarter 3 Worldwide Smartphone Sales Figures, much awaited, have now been published. Headline figures that the entire smartphone market grew by 4% year on year, no surprise, despite the economic climate, with Nokia's Symbian smartphone sales growing by 6% year on year, and with their world market share now also up at 40%. RIM are up in second place worldwide with 21%, and Apple are up in third place with their iPhone range with 18%. HTC and others were the big losers here, though, in terms of market share to the big three. In terms of smartphone platforms, Symbian OS powered smartphone sales grew 3% year on year, but their worldwide market share was held steady at 46% in the face of increased competition from RAM and Apple. Microsoft's Windows Mobile was the big loser here, with world market share now down to less than 9%. Android figures here and Canalyst figures for the first time, with 3% market share. That one's going to go up and up. Motorola have announced a droid, so far only available on Verizon in the USA, but sure to go worldwide in due course. The specs include a 3.7 inch display, and it's the very first phone to use Android 2.0. It has a 5 megapixel camera with dual LED flash and near DVD video recording. There's Wi-Fi, GPS of course, and the main features are the slide out QWERTY keyboard and the inclusion of Google Maps navigation, as featured in the previous phone show. Announced at the end of the C2009 show, Fujitsu and Qualcomm Innovation Center have been appointed to the board of the Symbian Foundation. This announcement represents a very significant endorsement of the Symbian Foundation by a key player in the mobile space. The ITU, that's the telecoms bit of the United Nations, has joined the American CTIA in agreeing on micro USB as the cable standard for phones for the future. So that's definite then across the board and just about every phone in the world will be micro USB within two years. Note that all Nokia 2009 smartphones are already micro USB equipped. Hi Steve, my name is Sri and this is the iPhone 3G, a great touchscreen phone with the best virtual keyboard and best mobile browser in the market with tons of applications downloadable from the iTunes App Store. I'm also using the Nokia N86. It is a solid dual slider phone from Nokia and has a completely different ethos to the iPhone with some key advantages. It allows one-handed usage. It allows multitasking. It has a great 8 megapixel camera with good digital zoom and face detection. And it also has some applications such as the internet radio which are standard on it as opposed to the iPhone. So there you have it. This is my mobile device of choice, the Nokia N86. Thank you. Number one in my top five in the last phone show, eh? Impressive stuff for this, the new Nokia N97 Mini, and it absolutely deserved the top slot. It's a stunning phone in lots of ways. But I have had a lot of criticism pointing out all the original N97's defects and saying it shouldn't have been anywhere near the top five. Well, technically it wasn't. The original N97 wasn't in it at all. It was the N97 Mini that took the honours, and therein lies the problem. By making it part of the N97 family, Nokia have somewhat tainted this device at birth. It would have been far better to have called it the N98 or E91. Now that would have got tongues wagging in a very different way, I reckon. But N97 Mini is its name, so I'll live with it. As I intimated in the top five, the N97 Mini basically takes nearly everything that was wrong with the 97 and fixes it. So the GPS here is very sensitive, very responsive, and hasn't let me down once. The camera glass now has no shutter to grind dirt across it. The bulky plastic rear is now sleek and thin stainless steel. The fiddly keyboard now has better defined keys and with better mechanical feedback. 
the screen's brighter and more vivid, and there's oodles more internal flash memory, 250 megabytes more, to counter the N97's infamous disc C shortages. The overall effect is stunning. What's the catch? Well, as you'd expect with Mini in the title, there have been a few cutbacks, though none are showstoppers in my opinion. The 32 gigabyte mass memory is now 8 gigabyte. The screen's reduced a little at 3.2 inches. There's no FM transmitter on account of the uh, amount of metal, I'm guessing. Nokia simply couldn't find anywhere suitable for the big aerial needed. And the batteries, 20% smaller at 1200 milliamp hours. The big question is whether on balance the improvements are worth the cutbacks. In my opinion, definitely yes, unless you positively need the extra size and capacity. In fact, here's how to look at the Nokia N97 Mini. Here is the E75 rated by me as number five last month. Love the form factor, but would have killed for something of similar quality and form factor, but with the screen covering the whole top surface. The N97 Mini is it. The two devices have identical size, taking uh, most things the E75 can do, but with far larger display, more up-to-date interface and OS, even better camera, now five megapixels with Carl's Zeiss optics and dual LED flash, uh, digital compass, and crucially for me, BBC iPlayer compatibility for watching TV programmes offline that I've been downloading. S65th edition in this new product release 2.0 version with kinetic scrolling everywhere works really well. It's no iPhone interface, but then there's twice as much raw functionality to shoehorn in, so I can forgive having to group functions on menus here and there. Most importantly for the N97 Mini, the phone's size means that uh, unlike with the 3.5 inch screen N97, it's now possible to hold and use the device like a traditional phone, with the average thumb now able to span the display when needed, and yet with the full QWERTY keyboard, never more than a flip away. The best of both worlds, yeah, and it feels a million dollars, which is why I picked it as the top phone in the world, and why I have absolutely no regrets. Other than that Nokia didn't call it the E91. Compiled by our very own Tim Salmon of the Phone Show Chat, here's our Android Top 10 Applications. At number 10, Task Manager. A lot of these utilities are available, but this is the best. It's a bit slow to load, but there's an instant RAM regain by being able to stop all running apps, plus a myriad other features. At number 9, Disk Usage. This tells you which apps and files are hogging your disk space. At number 7 and number 8, Barcode Scanner and Shop Savvy. Use these together with your phone's camera to snap barcodes and discover shopping options in local shops and on the internet. Track down the best prices. At number 6, SMS Backup. Drops all SMS into your Gmail account, labelling it SMS and filing it away. Very handy. At number 5, eStrong's File Explorer. This is a file manager, simple and straightforward. Loads of operations, unlike some other Android file managers. At number four, G Reader Notify. This pops up in the notifications bar as often as you have it set to tell you that Google Reader now has new stuff waiting for you. Then one click launches Google Reader in the browser. Into the top three. At number three, Twidroid, a Twitter client. Yes, the Android standard, the best one on the platform. More functions than Peep. Uh, number two, Google Search by Capital Voice. This City, works brilliantly. Integrated into the search widget, adds a microphone icon, silky smooth. Why tap on an on screen keyboard when you can just say what you want to look for? But at number one, and as mentioned in phone show chat number seven, Google's own podcatcher works beautifully. Grab podcasts on the run. That's it for now. Would you like to see more of me in the phone show chat audio podcast every week, 45 minutes with me and Tim Salmon chatting about all things mobile? We'll see you there. And yes, don't forget any spare PayPal dollars as a donation to keep the phone show going. Thanks a lot.